Rob? Here. Kristen? Is not here. Uh, I am here. And Brian? I'm here. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So minutes from our last meeting, January 18th. Um, the commission voted four to three to increase the number of members by, uh, by three to be publicized by April 1st. Um, so that would be two new members and one member to fill the current slot that's already open. If you guys remember, we have one slot that's still open. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I think included in that, we opted to have a treasurer as well as one of the positions? Yes, we did. I did, I had that noted down um, the next, uh, a few bullet points down, but- Okay, no problem. Um, Thank you. For that, we will need to make a change to the existing ordinance to increase the number of members for the commission. Correct. Uh, we noted we have $4,000 in the kitty to put toward the fire station project. Um, of, there's a possibility to request sponsorship from developers or other possibilities for fundraising at a function hall were mentioned. Uh, the first step we decided is to, we need to find a treasurer for the commission and possibly to look for one of our new members to handle the account uh, to be the treasurer. Uh, commission members Brian and Erin are to draft a letter requesting sponsorship to fund grants. We volunteer for that. Uh, we discussed multiple channels for fundraising to consider, and that would be a few different ways to go about. One would be going after grants to fund our projects. Another would be seeking private funding and another would be seeking funding from developers for specific projects or general support of the Public Arts Commission. One idea was voiced to include letters with the water bills that were sent out as a mass send out to request support. Um, another idea is personal letters to, uh, excuse me, uh, personal letters to companies wanting to advertise support of the Public Arts Commission. Uh, Rob voiced a need to create a strategic plan for fundraising and public arts commission projects in general. Um, he's open to being the person to draft this and we'll need input from all members to make it really complete. Uh, the call to artists for uh, Point of Pines and Butler Circle submission deadlines and timelines have been extended uh, for the projects to be submitted by April and completed by the end of August this year. Joanne voiced a need to clean up tags that were on the Revere Peach, uh, Revere Peach Parkway before Winthrop Ave Bridge, where some bushes have been cleared. There's some bad graffiti that needs to be cleaned up there. An idea was brought to the table to leverage the artist chosen for the Northern Strand event to have a winner from that event take over uh, this other location uh, to, to put their own work as, as a completely separate mural. Uh, the logo bumper stickers have been ordered and they were three by three dimensions. Um, as a city in all postings online and social media, we must al always give credits to the artists for their work. Um, just a note on that. And that's everything I have. Any comments or? Well, sounds good. <clears throat> Somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion. Second. To accept. Okay. Very good. So next on our agenda, we have um, the Better Beaches Project, which is a partnership with Bell Friends of Belle Isle Marsh. Um, has anybody spoken to Joanne about this already? A little bit with her. Uh, would you like to give an update to the group in her absence? Basically, it's to work with them to help create art based in that particular environment where they are. I believe she's talking about maybe kiosk type things that would work with it, that where information could be put on and into them. 
in that environment. That's basically all we spoke about. Okay. So are you talking about within Belle Isle Marsh, the, the park there, the reservation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a $25,000 grant uh, for some sort of public art project. Uh -huh. And it's really for um, nonprofit organizations. So okay. I think Joanne was interested in pursuing that. And she found out that the Friends of Belle Mar Marsh are working on that as well. Okay. So it would be a great opportunity to um, partner with another organization. Mm -hmm. So I think more to come on that. Probably the next step would be whomever on this team wants to work on that will probably set up a call um, to meet with friends of Belle Isle Marsh to figure out the application and such. There's a lot of information in the chat. Hopefully we get the uh, if you If anybody... Sorry, go ahead. I said, hopefully we'll get the grant, the funding for it. Yes, it'd be a great opportunity to do that. What's typically the timeline for something like that, Elle? Months? Uh, it depends, every grant is different. Okay. Um, I, I haven't really um, got too far into it. I sent the you, information on to um, Council McKenna. Um, if anybody months. just, I just want to make a note that if anybody is ever looking for the link to this meeting or the agenda, it is on the review.org city calendar. Okay. So you can always click there and you'll be able to access the agenda and the link to the meeting. So if ever you can't find it in your email or you may have deleted it, or if anybody at home wants to log into the meeting as a guest, um, the link is always there. Um, and it's there normally at least 48 hours in advance and sometimes um, in advance of that. Someone wanting to come on as a guest did want to email us first to let us know that they'd be coming and what they'd want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, that would be great, but anybody can join at any time and the link is available. Uh, okay, so moving along. Um, so the Beachmont Fire Station, so we've talked about that. The DPW is scheduled to uh, do a clean out of that. Joanne has also suggested that we do an inventory of the historic contents within the, with the museum, within the fire station. Uh, so I've actually been working with Toby Perlstein uh, from Riviera Society for Cultural and Historic Preservation. And she's been very interested in visiting um, the the fire station just to document what is in there. So I think that would be a nice match. And hopefully that will be happening um, within the next few weeks between this meeting and our next. So we should have a better update then. Um, Council McKenna has also talked to the mayor about getting a structural analysis done of the facility um, just to make sure that we can advance whatever hopes and dreams we might have for that for um, the pursuit of public art and art in general. So she has, um, I think, vetted those, those three items um, for advancement. Uh, the next one, I'll turn over to Erin uh, for an update on Call to Artists. We've actually made some significant progress there. And I think Erin will probably have a check for you, I'm hoping for this Friday, to get that up and running on the website. Okay, great. Yes, um, I was actually just going to email Tariq to see if the check was, um, you know, if there was a, a timeline on the check. Um, but just to update everyone, so we, we've made progress with the callforentry.org. So you remember this is the posting site that a lot of artists post on, and it's the biggest definitely for public art. So uh, finally, I was able to get on a call with them and they helped they walked me through setting up the call on the platform. Um, so as soon as they receive a check um, from the city, we'll get that up. It, it will be up, you know, pretty much as soon as they receive the check because it won't take me long to upload the call details. Um, but it's really exciting because when I was speaking with him, I kind of like you know, pride a little bit to get a little bit more information of what we can maybe expect. Um, and he expects that um, even though this is our first call because it is a public art mural and um, the budgets that um, 
Elle was able to, to confirm for each project is $20,000 per project. Um, so with those figures and the locations and you know um, all of that, he expects that we'll probably end up getting between 100 to 300 submissions. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, yes. You know, so I think, I think that being said, we'll, you know, in the worst case scenario, we'll probably, you know, would still be a number that would give us, um, of course, we don't know until, until we do it, but so I don't want to speculate, but um, I'm excited to see what being part of this platform can do for our project. So um, as soon as that is up, I'm going to, I'll send uh, the link to everyone. And, and uh, actually, Ella, I wanted to ask, sorry, uh, I wanted to ask on the, what's, what we're able to do, because I know there are certain ways of communicating that we're not allowed to do as a commission. Um, so, because this will definitely be up before our next meeting. Um, so I'd like to just let everyone know, right? So, so we can start spreading the word. And basically what we would do is we won't, we will no longer have the Google form through our um, server or, or website for people to apply. They would, everyone would apply through call for entry. And it's a really amazing way to um, organize the submissions. It's extremely organized. We, we can each go on and, and look at them and judge them. And, and we'll have more information on that coming. Um, but it's a great way to kind of compare lots of applicants side by side. Um, so I think it's just gonna streamline the whole process for us. Um, so it, it's very exciting. Erin, thank you for doing That's that. Awesome. Um, I also you. wanted to note that Erin and I had a conversation. I did receive some feedback from an artist about what we had posted online. And I think one of the scary elements um, has been uh, that they have to organize their own police details for the work. Um, so we were doing that to make sure that we could fit it within the budget. So we talked about perhaps reducing the, the budget, which is why we've come to a level number of 20,000 per um, and remaining, leaving a remaining amount so that the city can facilitate the payment for the police detail mm -hmm. um, to just sort of alleviate that, um, that element. I do think we still need to communicate somehow in the call that working in four hour increments would be best just because we do have to support whatever work's being done by police detail for both permits. So anyway, I just um, I just wanted to note that based on feedback, we think that that's probably the best approach. So as long as nobody has any objections to that, we'd like to move that forward. No, Sounds exactly. good. There are no objections. I think, I think we'll pursue it in that way. Is that acceptable, Aaron? Definitely, definitely. Okay. I think, and, and one of the, the things that I love about um, this definitely taking a side and kind of managing the police detail on our end is going to uh, attract more artists that just wouldn't have to, that would, that would scare them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another thing that I love about the call for entry. So when you're going through the site and you're applying to a call, there's one form that comes up that's all legal information and kind of disclaimers and everything that we'll put in there to protect us. For example, you know, um, that the timeline is dependent on the permitting and things like that. Um, so all of that information is separate from the application requirements and what the artist needs to do right now. Um, so I think that, that, um, you know, that way of exchanging the information is also going to just make it a little bit easier for artists that aren't good at or don't have as much experience with, you know, legal things and, and all of that. Okay, that sounds Some great. of the data that they collect will show how many projects the artist has individually done in the format we're looking for. Yes, so what I've gone through and 
in my own notes, I basically took our call and um, split up the information into the different categories that they have on their site to organize things. Um, so basically, um, we want the artist to submit a proposal, right? We want to see samples of their yeah. previous work so that we can determine if they have the ability to complete the project. Um, but we also want them to submit a specific design for this project, right? So when they, um, when an artist applies for our call, they'll upload a file, which will be their proposal. So it will be a PDF or a JPEG or something, which is their color sketch of what they're proposing and any information that they want us to know about it. And then in a separate portion of their application, will be multiple images between three to six images, um, minimum three, maximum six of previous work of murals that they have completed or designed. So yeah, we'll portfolio. be- Portfolio, good. Yeah. Thank you, Erin. All right. It sounds like it's going to be a great platform for us I know it's taken a while for us to get it going, but I think once we're up and running, it seems like it'll be pretty pretty easy to jump from project to the next project to the next project and be a great way to get the word out. So I'm glad we're advancing that. Um, I, RPAC should be active now. I sent out a test. I'm not sure if anybody received it. If you did, can you respond to it? And if you haven't, and you should have, let me know. What did you send out, Al? Um, I sent out a test for the new email address, rpac at revere.org. So if you haven't received it and you should be on that list to be able to respond to that email, um, please let me know. Yeah, the only email I got last from you was the listing of all the, which you send out every month of all the meetings. That's okay. it. All right, so I'll follow up with IT. I actually just sent them an email right now because I sent it as a test and I did not receive it and I should be on it as well. So hopefully we'll get that up and running ASAP. I didn't receive it either. Al. No? Okay. So IT right. failed. So let me see. I'm not sure why that isn't up and running. I thought it, I had received confirmation it was. All righty, uh, so next item I think is Brian, social media update. Uh, the Instagram page is up. I've let it know that it's there. You and I spoke. Some people are starting to respond. We need to start pushing it individually on our social media side to have people go there. There's a few articles that are there, information, the, the logo, Naomi's, um, article in the paper do you want to do you want to bring it up and share screen or can you do it on your computer i'll give it a try i've had okay. a bad history of sharing well we can try it with zoom <laughs> if it doesn't can work you, it doesn't work can you All allow analysts, to you should that? have the rights to share so you can give it a shot yeah, there it is and remind us again what is the name on the page revere public arts commission okay at instagram all right, I'm there. Where do I need to go to? Whiteboard, phone, that's not it. So right at the bottom, you'll see- I'm already on the share page. I've got that up. Okay. It's the next page after that. I don't think that I have files. When it I says go to... um, share, there should be like a share screen option. Yeah, I've clicked on that and I've got the page up, select a window or application. I'd mm -hmm. like to try to go to Instagram. Just- if you do the Zoom window, we could see like everything on your um, like laptop, I think. Where is the Zoom window, Naomi? Like, like it's, see the option there? It's like an option to like show everything kind of like on your computer. Files, advanced, computer audio, video, portion of the screen, PowerPoint, center, second camera. That's all that's showing. If you want- I think you already have to have it up. So if you go to your browser and you bring up the Instagram account and Alrighty. then you go to share screen, it will show in one of the little boxes and you can share. Ah, that helps. Give me a second. 
No problem. So while you're working on bringing that up, does yeah. anyone have um, ideas for a temporary exhibit opportunity? So perhaps maybe, you know, for one or two nights, we could highlight a few local artists or something like that. Uh, we could maybe use the museum as a venue. I can put that together because I've got several people that are uh, going to be in the pop-up art show I got going. Can you see it? Yes. yes. We're public arts. A little bit about when we had first put out our mission statement. I have sent L the email to the person there to grammatically correct this. So they'll take care of that. Um, let's go back. Nice logo, Crack Naomi. Cracker Jack logo. Who's that? Revered okay. Journal artist? Yeah. Little link to the Revered Journal. So you could see that. Great. And then just the, the mission statement and the value and the vision statement are up on those. Great. Nice job, Brian. No, Thank it's you. pretty simple. You're welcome. Thank you very much. At um at the next event, we could like, if we share the Instagram, I'm sure a lot of people will follow it and then Every time we have an event after that, yeah. more people will, because of it. Well, Great. we don't have a lot of content to put on it right now. Yeah, but it will build over time. We have to highlight so, it. So I think, were we going to highlight um, an artist? Wasn't there an artist that recently passed that you wanted to highlight their work? Paul Ferraro? We How was could that do that. On? We could do that. I've got him up on revereArts.org the web page that I started for artists. There's quite a few people on that page. So I'll uh, ask there for local artists to do that. Um, yeah, I can go, I can give a sister a call and make sure everything's copacetic for doing it. And uh, okay. co copy shots of his graphic designs and stuff like that. Okay. Um, can we also put a link to this on the website on revere.org? Oh, hell yeah. Public arts? So yes, do you yes. just send me whatever that link would be and um, I can get that posted right away. We have someone sure. in our office that's now doing the posting. So if anybody has anything or any other local art events or anything that are coming up, you can send them our way and we'll get them posted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Awesome. That's good. Great progress. And what else do we have? We don't have much left. I think... Um, Temporary art exhibit. So do you want to try to figure out, so we could do maybe something in May. Do you think we'd have enough time to plan for that, Brian? Well, what we've been doing is pop-up ones. Mm -hmm. So like if I learn on Tuesday, we can use it Friday. It's that much of a crush. So we get oh. people lined up beforehand that have stuff ready to do it. So we could do projection of photography if someone has a piece they want to bring in. They can do that. We could do art talk. We're looking at doing some performance pieces. There's mm -hmm. some people in the Khmer community that are classically trained in the dance and mm -hmm. they'd wear their outfits and all that and do that. So we've got a couple of different things we can do. Okay. I don't know if the museum would be big enough for that. Maybe it would. No. You mean the Revere, the old convent? Yeah. I mean, the rectory? Yeah. I don't think oh, that no. would be big enough for a dance, but we could do, you know, kind of a smaller evening thing so what what's, about one the, of the, uh, what's the goal of the pop-up for the revere at this you're talking about the uh revere's historical society building yeah we don't have to have it there we could have it anywhere uh, we could have it at one of the schools if that's a better venue um okay. the garfield's going to be better. a nice idea to get us going and sort of get the word out there yeah. and yeah. also just an opportunity for local artists to just highlight their work if they wanted, the, they could sell pieces or um, just display pieces. Thoughts on that? Any anyone? I'm all for it. Should we should we have like an exhibition theme? No, that makes it too oh. difficult and eliminates too many artists because we're okay. so new as a community. There are not a lot of established artists here. They okay. what they make, 
spring, you know, is the better mindset. And it opens up to a larger range of individuals to be able to participate. I think the Garfield's great. Don't we have an auditorium there already? Yes, they do. And a display space. I've seen it. It would work perfect. You could do a talk there. There's space for dance. The RMA has a great space as well. Uh-huh. What's the, the Romney RMA? Marsh, Romney Marsh oh, Academy. Very great. Beautiful. Any space like that. Yeah, they have a great space. They have a huge cafeteria that's right at the front entrance, and they have a large foyer area, which um, we've had a few public meetings there, and it's really lent itself to, we had a lot of um, the master planning meetings there. Yes. So we had a lot of easels and boards and things like that. It just has a lot of space to sort of man- maneuver about. Um, so, or we could look at doing something outside, uh, but that's, you know, we still have to, Consider the weather with that, especially if people are bringing their artwork. We yeah. could tent it if we needed to. That eliminates showing projections. Yeah. Summer, my mom does the um, the Revere Beach Art Festival, mm-hmm. and a lot of artists go there and like sell and show their work. And that's how I found out about a bunch of the local artists in Revere. So I think having a thing where people can like sell stuff and maybe mm-hmm. where there's like an art competition too would encourage a lot more local artists to participate in it. Um, if it was outside, I feel like it's a little too cold right now, but I don't know how the weather will be <laughs> next month. The yeah. <laughs> Naomi, I sold people it doesn't get warm till June. <laughs> <laughs> It was spring, like like two days ago, and now it's snowing. <laughs> I know. That's I, only wore, I only wore one pair of gloves that day. <laughs> That's why mean. I want the McKinley, a space down there when we get that going. Auditorium, stage, all that stuff there in a historic building. Yeah. Now, we had spoken about doing pop-up art and stuff like that. I've reached out to the city councilors. I've gotten mm-hmm. a couple of them to feedback on that. I've got a bunch mm-hmm. of information. Can I share the screen again? Sure. I don't, nah, there it is. I see it disappears when I go away. Let me pull it up. I'm sorry. I've got to go back on my, much call and pull it up. So does it make sense to maybe do like the pop-up um, if we can do it outdoors at the, um, at the museum? In the parking lot of the museum and then we could. if it's if it's there's a rain date um move it to like rma or something like that someplace where where it's will be easily transferable just relative to access and setup and whatnot well, we could plan for it to do it outside even at rma mm-hmm. or at the museum and then move it inside mm-hmm. if we needed to yeah, I think that Toby whatever, would appreciate. Venue. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Toby might appreciate actually having an event right next to the museum, just to maybe get some people in. Yeah, I think it'd actually. be a great opportunity yeah. to do tours as well. Yeah, there's a playground there as well, so if yeah. you have smaller children we could do a Saturday afternoon. You know, maybe yeah. ten to ten to four or something like that on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. I can put like posters up in high school if you want um, for the the exhibit, whatever we're doing, because I remember oh, that's a great um, idea. Yeah, the Museum of Fine Arts had something and they gave all of us like a bunch of posters. And I know like a ton of my friends went and a lot of people went just because we knew about it. So mm-hmm. a lot of community people and they could tell their parents and any like children of local artists they go mm-hmm. learn about it. <laughs> so I'll do that. What's what about um, from just, I guess, um, communicating to the community? Uh, would it be possible to get something in the uh, Revere Journal? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And we could put it on the social media too. Mm-hmm. So, who wants to work on that as a, a mini subcommittee? So and that what we can is make this? Some progress. And to do a pop up, something um like say may pick a venue there we go um create some materials 
to promote it? Well, since I've done four or five of them already, I guess I'll volunteer on it. You're going to volunteer, Brian? I can How do that I? begrudgingly. <laughs> no, not at all. I've got okay. the infrastructure set up to reach out and do it. Great. Where we're actually sitting on people that have stuff ready. Why can't I enlarge in the window? Did you say you wanted to do it as well, Naomi? Um, I said I can make like I don't really know much about um renting out venues and stuff because I've never done anything like it. Yeah, before. do you want to help? You can help with um working on the materials, the advertising for it. Yeah, I. I, I could totally do that. I can make the poster and I can help share it on social media too. Brian, if okay. you email me the password and stuff for the Instagram, I can help run it. I think I'm pretty good at Great. that. Share it across okay. my Brian, Good. do you want to share that editing information with Naomi? Yes, I will. Great. Why am I having a hard time? Do you see it yet? I can see your screen, but all I can see is that you're trying to open something. Yeah, I'm trying to get back. Now I've got, I've got it up, but I can't get back to. So do stop share. If you go to stop share. Yeah. And then yeah. do share screen again, and then choose I... the window that shows what you want to show us. We seen it. No, no. you uh, keep going to the uh, your file. If you do um, stop share, yeah, just go to desktop. It'll be the upper left, I think, option. So share screen, upper share left screen, upper left is de desktop likely. Well, it's yeah, it's got a bunch of things there, yeah. And um, it'll be easier to navigate to get the one specific. Uh, file that you want. Okay, you know, see. Creative, creative Industries, industries. In Massachusetts. All right, I can't yeah. see you, but that's all right. So I had, when I first started talking to Brian about starting the Public Arts Commission five plus years ago, six years ago, I got information back in 2000, the earliest or the latest information I could find was like 2016, 2017. So I reached out to Jeffrey Turco and Jessica Giannino, and they were able to help me get a little more updated information. What I'll do is I'll email this to everybody. But what it does is it breaks down what the creative industry is in this House District 16 and House District 19 in where we live, Revere. And it shows the percentage of people, what it does, how much work, 3.2% of all business, 8.2% of all businesses. And then it breaks down schools, instructions, design, film, performance, visual in each district of who, what, when, and where the information is. And I've got some more splash type stuff for this that uh, goes along with it. And I'll be sending out the bundle to everybody. I'm gonna stop screen on that. Cause that's basically what it is. But I've got stuff from the American uh, for the arts that has information on that. And this is some of the stuff I've shared with some of the city councilors. And what I'm asking them to do in the awards and the open councilors is to recognize an area in their ward where a potential art piece could go up. We talked a little bit about this, Al. You know, we could do the kiosk like down at Costa Park. That one needs a little bit of loving. It's getting where it's showing its age. Well, we could put art pieces in and close them in with a plastic type shield on them. We can do the banners like how they did Revere, you know, sunrise and sunsets on Revere and put them on poles. We can use individual poles like how they put signs on and we can do a piece on that that works like that. I've also seen when I was in town the other day shooting and uh, I'll send you the picture. I'll wait till you see this piece. It's a piece of metal. Then it's all plexiglass that comes up in curves and comes up straight. And they put the piece of art in the center of two pieces so that it looks like it's just hanging there in the air. It is the coolest looking thing I've seen. I actually shot a picture of it with the custom tower and the picture of the custom tower was from like 1910 that they had hanging up. 
which is really nice. And then the ones down at like um, the Marquis Bridge on Revere Beach, where they have those types. So I explain that to them. And what they're going to try to do is find some people in the community, whatever type of group there is that might be interested in being a little interactive with us. And the, the excuse me, the other thing is to reach out to or help us look towards businesses that would be favorable to looking at helping us do these type of projects, since it is their community broken down inside, you know, their neighborhood that they know. And uh, I've spoken to a couple of the, you know, the councilors at large, and uh, Mark Silvestri was up for if we were to take the property at uh, the Vets on Broadway, and on the far right side as you face it, I don't mm-hmm. remember the name of that street, putting a kiosk type thing there or something, he'd be all for it, and we Great. could do some veteran art. And he said, and I said, we can have it curved through and we could also, he could do one section where it shows events to help defray the cost for that a little bit. And Great. so it looks like people are interested in it. It's just getting some of the city council or this, hear me now, to get going a little bit and respond to your emails and reach out on Facebook or Instagram, whatever you're on and come be part of what we're doing. And I think um, we also spoke Brian, about there's a kiosk that we are going to have installed in the spring. So probably more like April, May, um, right at the corner of Griswold Park. Yes. Um, at the trailhead there. So uh, we'll the be single able to side utilize, ones, two sides, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be able to utilize that space for our art as well. So maybe we want to start thinking about how we can um, attract artists to be interested in displaying their work there. I think we do a simple call for the next meeting. Yeah. A simple call and anyone and everyone can be whoever does. And I can take and put together a a collage, a mural or something like that with text and explaining what it is. We print it up, put it up and say, this is what we're doing. We want you to come play and be part of this. Okay. Do you you want to present that for the next meeting? Let's figure out I'll put an email together, a piece that says we're going to do that. And we can do that through social media and through our own groups. We don't need to. And we can put it up on the public arts Instagram page, asking for people to do that. I'll take the email hits towards me rather than having many steps. You know, that isn't that hard. I've got a dedicated page and phone for that. So that works. And the the other thing was we spoke about, Al, was on top of the Wonderland parking lot, the screen there. Any word on that? Oh, the screen. No, I did. I did actually sent that out, and I hadn't heard back. So thank you for reminding me. I will follow up on that. Because then I we got start... my email because I had a contact um, way back at the beginning of COVID. So mm-hmm. it's possible that there may be a different contact now, but I'll follow up on that from our conversation. And that um, is easily well, hundred thousand cars go up and down that road, so we get yes. fifty thousand going by seeing that that's easy to put a, a splash piece together that'll be the right you know uh size for that to look good okay. and i got on that program that you had sent to joanne that we had missed the dates on yeah for the state mm-hmm. yeah i was able i knew some people there and i was able to get into that so that i'm going to do that program great very yeah. good that's it for me. All right. Does anyone have any other items you'd like to discuss? Uh, okay, I so. To, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to check in on the Northern Strand um, event, if we're still planning to, to do that in the spring um, or summer. I think we should, I think we should move that forward. Uh, do you, I know that we talked about potentially doing um, pillars for each community. Mm-hmm. And so do we, a question to follow up question on that is, do you think we should post that on the call to artists or on that same platform? Should we utilize that same strategy or do you think it would, we want to keep that more local? Could we flush that out a little bit? I love the idea of inviting all the communities that are on the trail. 
-hmm. And is I guess six of us all together that do it. Yes. So there's there's a, I want to say there's twelve pillars, mm -hmm. six communities. All right. Well, they so get two, six, two and then pillars we get our each. Six. Well, they each get one, and then we get our seven. <laughs> so everybody could get two, and then we still have the upper wall. Yes. There's three upper walls that are quite significant as well. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do is reach out to those communities to the you know, the comparable people that work in whatever, whatever they call it, an art community, mm -hmm. a public arts commission, arts and culture, whoever that is, and let them do a call to get someone. And then they choose who they want for their community to come in. Okay. Since it is a shared mm -hmm. thing, I think we should let the community pick what they want on, even though it's in Revere, they should be able to That's do the great. right thing. You know what I mean? And then we do ours, we do our call. And I spoke, I've spoken to now, I've got about four people from out of Boston that all do the, because Ellen and I had spoke about the challenges of it getting tagged all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and since we want to try to reach all different communities and all different age groups in the communities, is that maybe we go with the hip hop culture on that. And since it's a bike path and people are boarding on it, and doing all that thing. I've seen people with electric boards, the whole nine yards and skating. That we do that style and we do a call for that style to be put up rather than a historic or an abstract or something. It just becomes a focal point. And I think that would help build a bit of pride in the place that it is. And it would help mm -hmm. us minimize having tagging and we should look into spraying stuff on top of it so they can't do it too. We do, we, um, we in the past, what we've done is uh, we use an anti-graffiti glaze yes, right. that goes on the top. Yeah. Um, it, you actually paint it on with a roller. Oh, and then um, it clears out? Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah. And it's clear, it's totally clear. Um, you do have to wait a couple of days for the paint to cure before you can use it. Um, so we did run into an issue with one gentleman that did a switch box and then it was tagged that very night before it could even cure. Well, I so, think Joanne should volunteer her time for that since she couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> so all in favor, I motion that. <laughs> so, but definitely um, we should definitely have the anti-graffiti paint on that as well so that we can wash anything off. Mm -hmm. But okay, so just now, uh, to and recap. Just the, one more clarification on that. It yeah. doesn't mean they have to have their posts in hip hop style. Oh no, I think every community they can choose could whatever do what they, they want. want. But I'm just saying that we make it inviting and make it make it hip. You know what I mean? Like you're driving through a live TikTok. And that might be another thing we do at that location one mm -hmm. day where people take in do their TikTok at Revere's bike path. That's cool. So with that uh, with that event be getting pushed to the fall or to next spring? I think we should regroup, see what we can put together for a call for Revere, share that with the other communities yep. and get their feedback to see um, timeline. what's a realistic timeline. Okay. Um, I have could... actually, it's a different type of working group. I have a, a working resiliency group for the Saugus Pines River watershed, but it's all five, it's five of the same communities that the trail runs through. So and can I, I ask what the communities them, are? Uh, it is Malden, Everett, Riviera, Saugus, and Lynn. Cool. And uh, we're working on a resiliency project, but I can reach out to that group, that team, and ask uh, for their public art contacts. Thank you. We'll go from there. So I'll take that as a step one, uh, Rob and Erin, if you guys can figure out a time we can get together for our next meeting. I know you both are tied up with work mainly during the day. So if you need to meet in the evening, that's fine. Just let me know in advance. Okay. And um, so we can get another committee meeting together, subcommittee meeting together and move it forward. Okay. Um, in we... the interim, I think that Brian and Naomi are going to work on um, putting together um, an event for say May or June uh, for pop-up artists. Um, we'll try to schedule that for outside at a venue that can also be inside. 
if you need any help, um, pick a venue. If you need some help um, booking it, let me know. I'm going to ask we do it inside. Okay, either either or. But if you want to just let me know where you pick and I can help with the res reservations of that. The challenges with weather and the pieces of art that are going to be painted, if there is that. I wouldn't want my stuff outside if it's going to rain, if we've got to run inside. And we're also eliminating any possibility of showing photographic digital images of people's work, where I think we can get a lot of people to say, oh, I can send you a picture of my stuff versus someone that's going to come and do it. Okay. Actually, physically, because not everyone prints their art yet <laughs> in the photograph world, at least in the community of Revere. It's okay. still... A growing process for those people. Okay. But we okay. just did a pop up show Sunday at the New Year's celebration, Chinese New Year's celebration in Chinatown. And we had about 10 or 12 people show up for that. Nice. Uh, and we've been showing images up on Instagram and on pages and stuff. Even Bobby Mara broke out the big old camera that he shoots eagles with to, uh, and he got some great pitches. And he, the best part was he walks up to me and he's like, oh, bundled up what I had around him and all this because it was cold and snowing. And he goes, I got fireworks. I got them blowing up. They look great. He was so excited about that. Great. Yeah, so it'll be nice to see that come together. So I think we have a few things, a few irons in the fire. And uh, I think start starting in the spring, we'll start to see some things start to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. so it's taken some time and some planning but i think we're well on our way now so if um we'll have an update uh as so far as a proposed date venue and some materials um marketing materials to get out there uh for the next meeting for a pop-up event um rob aaron and myself will advance um getting a draft call to revere artists so that we can share that with the other five, com the other four communities uh -huh. that are on the trail. Um, so we'll have that to share for our next meeting and we should and have another update on the fire station as well. And if it's done beforehand, please share so I can yeah. use the info off that to make the marketing piece that Naomi and I are going to do. Yeah. After you get all the information um, that about the event, then I can start making the poster with maybe okay. some pictures of the artists. So there'll be two different events. One would be for the Northern Strand and the yeah, second I mean, would be for the one you and Brian are going to work on. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I think that's a wrap unless anybody has anything else. Not me. Not here. All right. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. I hope you have a Thank great you. night. Thank you. Hope we see some warm weather soon to melt all the snow. <laughs> really? It'll be spring when we see each other next. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. All care. right. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs>